right, my friends, we've unpacked the opportunities for Azure AI, and now it's time to talk about how to build on Windows. Here with more, please welcome Divya Venkataramu and Fred Balsiger. How are you doing, my friends? Wonderful. Good. That is amazing. So we saw briefly Windows AI Studio. Who wants to take the baton and tell us about that? Windows AI Studio. I'd love to. Tell us. Okay, so the Windows AI Studio is effectively a collection of cutting edge tooling paired with AI models that come from repositories or, like for example, from Hugging Face and even our own Azure AI Studio. I see. And so what a developer can do with the Windows AI Studio is that person can go and discover, integrate, optimize, and then finally deploy those models in a Windows optimized fashion inside their app. Wait, are we talking like in Windows or in the cloud? In, in, in Windows. Windows. We're specifically talking Windows here. That's amazing. So why, why would someone want to do something like this? Why would someone want to do something like this? Uh, That's a great question. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so let's think of some scenarios that come to my mind, right? Like okay. Fred and I do that all day. That's our day job. We talk to a bunch of ISVs. Some scenarios, like let's say you are um, an ISV who wants to do video editing or photo editing, or right. you have a video conferencing app, and you want to embed some of the advanced studio effects into your app, and where real-time precision is really important, that's when you want to run local AI uh, on a device. I see. I see. And, and, and that's cool because, like, maybe I misunderstood. It's actually bringing the models into Windows itself, and you're running them locally. Exactly. Okay, cool. And so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that this is also really good for at the edge kind of AI stuff. Tell us about what that means and how this enables this kind of uh, uh, functionality. Yeah, so, so you're exactly right. So when we say at the edge, we mean on a processor on your Windows machine, right? Okay. And so we have over 100 million GPUs, graphics processing units out there uh, booting Windows every month. And then now what's becoming new in the industry that we are quickly embracing are neural processing units as well. And NPUs is what they stand for, uh, you know, are uniquely designed to run AI model workloads, again, on the edge per your question. And, and that's, that's really cool. Uh, and the reason why I like this is because I, I love working with AI models. What kind of models exactly can someone bring down? Do you have examples of models? One thing I would say is, uh, you know, we, we were talking to some of the ISVs. If you want to run some tech summarization model on the edge, if you want to run that on highly confidential documents, uh, that's a classic example where you want to run this model. And some of the things that we will include in the Windows AI Studio to start with is Llama 2 models. Uh -huh. uh, we have Phi2, our own uh, model right. from the in-house Microsoft, and we also have Mistral, Falcon, other models that will also be included in the Windows AI Studio. And then uh, Satya talked about Phi2 this morning. Is that the same Phi2? Yes. That's, a, <laughs> that's really cool. So when, I'm, when we're talking local, and, and I know I'm kind of harping on this, but I want to be completely sure. Do you mean local, local, or is there an aspect of the cloud involved in this at all? There is no, we only look at each other because this is a popular question. <laughs> yeah. uh, there is no aspect, aspect of the cloud involved in this. This is happening locally on your machine. And to add to that, right, when you think of the end-to-end -end workflow, uh, for example, the fine-tuning, this uh -huh. also happens locally because we're using Culora through Olive to generate the quantized models with low-rank adapters. This happens locally on your Windows device. Then you move on to model evaluation that also happens locally. And if you want to optimize the already fine-tuned model, we have Olive, which is embedded into the workspace. That also happens locally. Yeah. So it's pretty local, man. And so you, you kind of hit on this a little more, but I want to make sure to hit on this very specifically because I, I, I'm a data science guy, you know, by, by training, and I've been kind of trained to think like this all happens in Linux. Uh, why Windows? You mentioned a couple of them, but why don't you hit on them again? Because I want to make sure people understand what these things are. You talked about Qlora, you talked about Olive. Tell us about those two. Yeah, um, it's, 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 not, uh, you know, it's not funny at all that you yeah. think about whenever you think about AI, you think about Linux. Uh, that's what I want to reiterate, the importance of Windows subsystem for Linux. Yeah. This is a robust platform for developers to get started with AI. Um, especially developers can run 
Linux and Windows workloads on a Windows machine simultaneously at the same time. Developers can also share GUI apps, GPU, and uh, all sorts of files between these two environments with no additional setup. I know Fred would love to add more as well. Yeah. I, w I would. I mean, you know, I think perhaps another question to pull out of you here would be yeah. like, hey, why is Windows the best place yeah. uh, for AI developers? Yeah. I mean, that's clearly our objective here yes. is to make Windows the best for AI developers. And, and yes, the, the, the subsystem for Linux is a great answer. But if you actually think about it, just the scale of Windows, again, you know, over 100 million GPUs active today, uh -huh. right? And then if you think about it, we have the end-to-end -end story from optimized tool chains and IDE that's been around with us forever. And we iterate, you know, deliberately and cautiously. And so it's a stable place for you to go bring your AI experiences to the Windows platform. So how easy is this to do for devs? And I'm kind of leading the, the yeah. questioners, uh, right? Because yeah. is this something you, that developers can do right now or can do as easily, I mean? Okay, so let's see. So in about two weeks, uh -huh. developers will be able to grab a VS Code extension okay. and try it out for themselves. Okay. And I think one thing that I want to add is, you know, earlier you were probably touching upon that. What's the biggest problem this solves for developers, yeah. right? Like our intent is to make every developer an AI developer on Windows. To that end, Windows AI Studio simplifies generative AI app development. Yeah. What that means is if you are a developer, the biggest challenge we've heard developers tell us is they don't know how to get started with AI because there are a bunch of models available out there and they yeah. don't know what's the right tool set to choose from. That's where Windows AI Studio comes into play because we're bringing together the model catalog and the tool set together into one place. So, and you know, as Fred was alluding to, the model catalog has the models that we have vetted, tested internally, and in many cases optimized to work great on Windows. So we're bringing these two critical aspects together in one place. That's so cool. you have everything you need to get started with Gen AI development. Okay, so is it an easy thing to do? You know what? Can I put you on the spot? Oh, yeah, you can actually. Yeah? Okay, so I think we gave you bits last night. Yeah, they did. And, and you know what? This is the first time as a host I was actually given homework <laughs> to go home. So last night I spent about just an hour. So I, I brought in a, a video. It took about an hour to do this, but let me, let's roll this thing here. Hopefully they'll put it over here so I can see it. This is my desktop. This is me actually selecting a model configuring the project and what it, what it did, and this is cool, like if you're watching this, what it did is it set up the entire environment for actually fine tuning. So here you're seeing the parameters and I, I sped this part up a little bit because obviously yeah. it took about an hour to do, not because it was hard, but it generated the project. It generated the code for me to fine tune. You can see all the code is in there. It even dockerized it, but I was like, I want this to run on Windows, Windows. I didn't even use Windows subsystem for Linux. And you can see that what I did is like, wait a minute, you'll see at the bottom that there was a environment. And so I conda installed everything and then I ran it. And what you're gonna see here is the actual training on my machine of the actual thing. I'm not even using Windows subsystem for Linux, it's PowerShell. As you see yes. here, I'm fine tuning, I think Phi 1.5. And I think it has like 1.8 billion parameters. It's close. And I'm doing yes. it like on my machine on the actual GPU. Take a look. I mean, is this, this was Ooh, insane. This is so incredible. I'm like sitting there like last night, you know, I have a huge show, but I'm like, you know, this code is awesome. And then the other thing that to me was super interesting is when you want to interact with the model, it's PromFlow is built in. Mm -hmm. And so I'm able to talk to it and you can see I get an answer out of this thing. And this is just me, literally, I, 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 like, I think I emailed you all last night, like at 10.30 at night, saying that this is something I did. It was, there was a couple of things that didn't work for me, and it was because my Docker environment wasn't working. Oh. Uh, but I was like, well, I can go in there, and, and I literally installed an extra package yep. off to the races. And the reason why it took 40 minutes was because it was five minutes to start, 40 minutes to train, like a couple minutes to test. It was... Pretty insane. It was pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it was really good. So just to finish up, where can people go to learn to find out more? They can go to the, probably the link is on the yeah, screen. They yeah. can go to Windows AI-Studio, ak.ms. Uh, so you'll be able to learn more about this. And in the coming weeks, we'll have the Visual Studio Code uh, as an extension. This will be available as a Visual Studio Code extension, so you can get it there. And all you need is a GitHub account to get started. It's right. true. So it's, it's true. It's pretty uh, neat. That's what I did. And so, okay, well, this is exciting. Thank you so much for being with us. And I'm, I'm sorry to thank you for the homework. I learned a ton. <laughs> it was awesome. All right.